got, we're, we're building a, a whole series of starships in, in South Texas. Um, and so I think we've got, I don't know, hopefully about an 80% chance of reaching orbit this year. It'll probably take us a couple more years to achieve uh, full and rapid reusability, which I can't, I can't emphasize enough is it is, the, it is the profound breakthrough that is needed to extend life beyond Earth because it, it, it lowers the cost of access to space by orders of magnitude. SpaceX is making great strides in their mission to revolutionize space travel. One of the ways they are doing this is by building multiple Starship prototypes simultaneously at their Starbase facility. On March 8th, the S-26 prototype was moved out of the way to make room for the nose cone stacking of the S-28 prototype. The payload section of the S-28 was also transported to the high bay, complete with a functional payload door and a plethora of remove-before-flight tags. In addition, eight Raptors were seen being installed on Booster 9, which is ready to roll at the production site, should any test of B-7 suffer a significant failure. This booster boasts the next evolution of upgrades, which will increase confidence in an accelerated test flow for this booster. The future vehicles are lining up at the production sites, including parts for Booster 15 and Ship 32. With all these exciting developments, it's clear that SpaceX is making great strides in their mission to make space travel more accessible and efficient. Despite any obstacles, the current priority is to successfully launch the vehicle as a full stack unit and achieve orbital velocity. This is the main objective at present. The SpaceX crew is diligently working on the preparation of Ship 24. It appears that the majority of the heat tiles have been successfully replaced, leaving only a handful of tiles to be installed. Currently, Booster 7 remains at ease on the OLM while the structure is being fortified with armor. The shielding of the OLM is nearing completion, however, it has come to my attention that new metal has been added to cover the gaps. Previously, the OLM legs received a fresh coat of paint. The paint is there to protect against rust since they're basically on the beach. This is a final step as usual before every launch. In the meantime, more big pipes for the water deluge have come in and were offloaded at the launch site. Installing that system and building a sufficiently massive water supply will take months, however, and would likely preclude a March launch attempt, indicating that SpaceX's first orbital Starship launch attempt will happen without it. Along with these flight prototypes, Structural Test Nose Cone NC-31 is being prepped for movement with two 16-axle SPMTs for transport to Massey's test site. But wait a minute, isn't that Ship 29? Why are we calling it NC-31 all of a sudden? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. The NC-31 testing will certainly be an interesting piece, but it is an important milestone to verify that this portion of Starship is structurally sound as SpaceX improves and changes its designs. Those are all the remarkable activities going on at Starbase in the past few days. Huge thanks to Kevin Randolph and Starship Gazer for sharing these great photos with us. As always, their work is so amazing. Now, the next significant development in space exploration involves Russian astronauts embarking on SpaceX's Crew-7 and Crew-8 missions. NASA plans to fly at least two more Russian cosmonauts to the International Space Station aboard SpaceX's spacecraft. The agency is in talks to add a Russian cosmonaut to both SpaceX Crew-7 and Crew-8, which are the next two missions to the International Space Station, a report from Space News suggested. An agreement to carry a Russian on Crew-7 set to launch this fall is working through the Russian government and then back through, obviously our side to get final agreement. Kathy Luters, NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Operations, said during a March 2nd virtual briefing following the successful launch of the Crew-6 mission early that morning. The United States and Russia are continuing to fly integrated crews aboard their respective spacecraft in case either Russia's Soyuz spacecraft or U.S. commercial crew vehicles are not accessible for a long time, Luters added. Negotiations are also ongoing for Crew-8, which is not expected to launch until 2024. NASA used to be fully reliant upon Russia to get astronauts to orbit. The U.S. agency retired its space shuttle in 2011 and was working to get two commercial crew vehicles ready 
or replacement. All ISS crews used Soyuz for almost a decade, regardless of nationality, with NASA paying a per-seat price for access. SpaceX's Crew Dragon flew people for the first time in 2020, but for the nine years before that, NASA astronauts exclusively used Soyuz. Boeing's astronaut taxi, known as Starliner, has experienced development delays, but is expected to fly its first crewed test flight this spring. Russia's federal space agency Roscosmos has access to SpaceX commercial crew flights through seat swap agreements that are negotiated ahead of crew assignments. NASA also continues to fly American astronauts aboard Soyuz, but to a lesser degree. The current ISS manifest includes a Russian and an American who arrived through seat swaps. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, who was aboard Russia's Soyuz MS-23, and Russian cosmonaut Anna Kakina, a member of SpaceX's Crew-5. Rubio's plans to come home to Earth have been changed due to his ride, the Soyuz MS-22, springing a coolant leak back in December following a micrometeoroid strike, according to Roscosmos. That spacecraft has been fully replaced with MS-23, a new Soyuz, but NASA's backup plan while waiting was to squeeze Rubio into the Crew-5 spacecraft in case of emergency. Seat negotiations have been somewhat complicated by Russia's year-long war in Ukraine, which has severed most of the nation's space partnerships. Russia plans to depart the ISS after 2028 to build its own independent space station. ISS relationships, however, have persisted with little issue, the agency partners have emphasized. Notably, Starliner is not yet included in the Russia-US seat swap agreements, but Boeing is expected to include Russian cosmonauts after post-certification missions begin in 2024, Luders said at the press conference. We would like to continue that every single crew rotation mission has integrated crew on it, Luders said, referring to Russian cosmonauts flying aboard Starliner. Crew 6's integrated crew includes Russian Andrei Fedyev, along with the first long-duration United Arab Emirates astronaut flyer, Sultan Al Nayadi. Al Nayadi's mission arose through a complex NASA Russian seat swap, also involving the UAE and a private US entity, Axiom Space, that flies commercial astronaut missions. The Russian assignments for Crew 7 and Crew 8 are tentative at this time, but Roscosmos announced on March 1st via Telegram that it plans to add two unflown cosmonauts to the manifest, Konstantin Borisov to Crew 7 and Alexander Grebyankin to Crew 8. Crew 7 should fly in the fall and Crew 8 in the first part of 2024 if schedules hold. That's all the information we have for you today. If you appreciate the work my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.